Finn Balor. He appeared on the My Love Letter to Wrestling podcast, which is hosted by NXT UK star Mark Andrews. And he has some very interesting comments. I listened to it. I did listen to the audio. But credit to WrestlingNews.co for the transcription. I want to read some of this to you. He talked about still wanting to have a really good run as a heel. He said he kind of did in New Japan. They tried to do it in NXT, but it ended up going in a different direction. He, ba- he basically ended up back as a babyface is what happened. He said he's still looking for that really good heel run in WWE. I feel like I got a little bit stale. I was tired. I was exhausted. I was worn out by dealing with the politics, the office, the writers, and everything that goes with it. I just had enough. When I returned to NXT, I really felt that rejuvenated me in the ring. One thing I felt that helped with all the negative effects of the pandemic that was uh, taking the fans out of the equation in wrestling makes you change your cadence and tempo in your matches because you're not trying to perform for a large audience. You're literally performing in a one-on-one environment and you can really work on the details of the match. You're not so reliant on hearing the audible response from the crowd. I would produce a match to get a yay or a boo or a holy shit. But then when you take that element out of it, you can get back down to the nuts and bolts of what I actually learned in Japan, which is just gritty wrestling. I really feel like despite all the negative things that the pandemic brought us, it brought me that one positive thing that I can really get back to wrestling for me and the way that I like to wrestle. So he admits... He was tired, in his words, of the politics and the office and the writers at the tail end of his first main event, uh, or uh, main roster rather, main roster stint, before he ultimately ended up back in NXT. And then he revealed that when they wanted him back, he pitched going to NXT UK instead. He said, believe it or not, I actually pitched to go to NXT UK when they asked me to go to SmackDown. Because I knew my time at NXT was coming to an end. It had been two years and I worked with everybody. There really wasn't much more that I could do there. The idea came to go to SmackDown. And I counterpitched with NXT UK. And they said, maybe in a couple of years. But we need you on SmackDown right now. Yes, they needed him on SmackDown so badly. They turned around uh, three months later and moved him to Monday Night Raw. (laughs) That's how badly. That's how badly they needed him on SmackDown. I guess they needed him for the one the one program, right? The one match with Roman Reigns. They needed him to lose to Roman Reigns, and after that, it didn't matter anymore. We can, we can slide him on over to Raw. Anyway, he goes on. He says, for me, the move to NXT UK would have been the move. There's so many great guys there. Obviously, it's closer to home. I've been stuck in America for the last two years with COVID heightening the feeling of isolation in WWE and that bubble away from my friends and family. There were multiple reasons why I wanted to go to NXT UK, but the main one was because of guys like Noam, A-Kid, all of these matches I haven't really had the chance to put together. That was like a fresh challenge. Listening to him speak, because it's one thing just to read these comments, but to listen to the audio and listen to him speak, I, I do think that him being away from his friends and family for so long uh, had a lot to do with him wanting to go to NXT UK. I mean, he, in his own words, he said that that wasn't the main reason. He really he wanted to work with these other uh, people. But I, I do think uh, he was probably feeling homesick, you know, with the pandemic and not being able to see, you know, all of his family. But let's be honest here. Finn Balor is not a stupid person. Finn Balor is smart enough to know what would happen if he went back to the main roster. It was my biggest fear when he wrapped up with that last NXT run. It was a more, you know, aggressive version of that character that we saw from him. And the matches that he was having were great. And my fear was that the minute that he went back to Raw or SmackDown, smiley babyface Finn Balor would be back. And he went back. He got the title match against Roman Reigns. And they did that comically stupid finish that killed the demon dead, where the top rope broke and he fell flat on his face, and then it was never followed up on. Never followed up on. And what have they done with him since? Other than put over Austin Theory, what has he done? Now, to play devil's advocate, I would imagine that Finn Balor is making really good money. I mean, let's let's be honest, they're not paying this guy peanuts. 
I don't know if he's making a million dollars a year, but he's probably making uh, not too much less than that. He, he's probably making good coin working for WWE. So I can understand the company wanting him on Raw or SmackDown and not on a show that barely anybody watches. All due respect to the, the A-Kids and the Ilya Dragunovs of the world. I mean, they're all super talented. But WWE needs stars on TV now more than ever. Finn Balor is a star. Finn Balor is somebody that people like. Sending him to NXT UK, it's almost like sending him to a waste, a vast wasteland somewhere. Sending him to NXT UK, if he's making all of this money, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I, I'm still upset we never got the match between Balor and Walter that was scheduled before the pandemic hit. They were going to do that match in Dublin at a takeover show. So I, I can understand WWE's point of view on this. But if that's the case, then do something with him. If you want him so badly, if you want him on the main roster, then do something with him. Use him. That's my issue. Now we hear Vince McMahon is not as high on him as he used to be. He doesn't view him as a, a main event level talent anymore. He's kind of in the Jeff Hardy role of putting other people over. This guy was your first Universal Champion. And now, supposedly, he is not seen as a main event caliber talent anymore. Is it any wonder that this man was told, we want you on SmackDown, and his first instinct, his first reaction, instead of saying, fuck yeah, let's go, his first reaction was to say, well, here's what I was thinking. I have a different idea. Outsource me to another country. I, I want to go over there. That's not a man who sounds overly enthusiastic about going back to the main roster. And honestly, who can blame him? 